Okay, we'll do it again. Good evening. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is April 26, 2022, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start the meeting with an invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for your abundant blessings and surrounding us with stewardship and a supportive community in Kettering. We thank you for the ability to engage in useful work and for the honor of bearing these important responsibilities. We are grateful for your boundless love for all of us. Please continue to give us the strength and compassion with which to serve and grant us the wisdom to make appropriate decisions. Help us remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Guide this council so that we may work in harmony while serving our citizens with integrity and purpose. Allow us to fulfill the responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. And as we um, continue through our daily lives, let us constantly keep in mind the people of Ukraine and others who are affected by this horrible war that's going on over there. And um, we ask you to hold all your people in your hands. Okay, next I would like to uh, recognize our Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator who hasn't quite gotten in sync with me yet, but Mike Sparani. Mike, thank you for your assistance, and I'm gonna get it right one of these days, I promise. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Fisher has an excused absence tonight, um, so I'm going to call on Mr. Klepas for a motion to approve the minutes. Your Honor, I've uh, reviewed the uh, council meeting minutes from April 12th, along with the workshop meeting minutes for their approval. Second. Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? I believe the workshop minutes are not part of the, the approval tonight. That's right, we do need to amend, amend the agenda. Um, it, was no, it, was, the it, was, it was the retreat. Your Honor, yes. Your Honor, if I may, uh, Councilman Kleep has read uh, the minutes that we would like to approve tonight. And then after you vote on that, uh, you could make a motion to remove the retreat minutes from the agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, we will take the motion made by Mr. Klepas. It's been seconded and um, call the roll. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay. We will at this point uh, accept a motion to remove the March 24th special meeting minutes from the agenda at this point. Your Honor, I uh, move to remove the special meeting minutes from March 24th and 25th, 2022 from tonight's agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Anyone have any questions about that? Okay, let's go ahead and call the roll, roll on that. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay. Um, we do have some special presentations tonight. First, we have um, appointment to the Board of Community Relations, Vicki Colon, term ending 12-31-2022, and an appointment to the Board of Community Relations, uh, Kiernan Patel. Did you get that correct? Here. Kiernan Patel, um, term ending 12-31-24. Um, may I have a motion to approve the appointments? Move to approve. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Then is there anyone opposed? Okay, seeing none. Okay. Uh, we now have a proclamation. Um, Tom, Tom Robillard, Director of Planning and Development, will be ex 
accepting this proclamation this evening um, for Building Safety Month. And I am not seeing a copy of the proclamation. Actually, Your Honor, it will be Terry Walker. He's reading it. Okay, Tom's going to read it. Now. Actually. Okay, one of one of you is supposed to read it. Is that right? That's not what Sean is saying. No. This is like 20 seconds left in the game. The coaches called you over and decided who's going to take the last shot, who's going to be the play. So we're working on that. Okay. It is in the packet. I've been told, um, Jill, can you read it? The proclamation. Yeah, I do yeah. not have a copy of it. Sure. Jill, do you have it? I do. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Proclamation. Whereas the city of Kettering is committed to recognizing that our growth and strength depends on the safety and essential role our homes, buildings, and infrastructure play, both in everyday life and when disasters strike, and whereas each year in observance of Building Safety Month, people across the country are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety, resilience, and economic investment at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in pro protecting lives and property. And whereas our confidence in the resilience of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians who are building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, plumbers, and others in the construction industry who work year-round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown protectors of public safety, our local co code officials who assure us of safe, sustainable, and affordable buildings that are essential to our property, and whereas Safety for All Building Codes in Action, the theme for Building Safety Month 2022, encourages raised awareness about planning for safe and sustainable construction, career opportunities in building safety, understanding disaster mitigation, energy conservation, and creating a safe and abundant water supply. And whereas these modern building codes include safeguards to protect the public from hazards such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, floods, and earthquakes. Now, therefore, I, Peggy Lehner, <laughs> Mayor of the City of Kettering, Ohio, on behalf of the City Council and the community, do hereby proclaim May, 2000, May 2022 to be Building Safety Month in the City of Kettering, Ohio, and I urge all citizens to reflect on how they can improve building safety in their personal and daily lives. Do I read this in witness whereof? Okay. Thank you. We're still on this learning curve here, apparently. <laughs> um, Terry, Terry Welker, who is our head building officer, is going to be accepting this proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the building code is only in effect for that short time in our history while a building is under construction. So after that, we sign that so important certificate of occupancy, we depend upon our fire department. So it's with honor and respect that we receive it on behalf of the planning and development partner, uh, uh, department in partnership with the fire department, who we work with in tandem every day during construction and even on days like today when you get called out because a building, a car drove through a building. So um, it's, a, it's always an interesting job. And uh, architects, builders, owners have, our first duty is really to make our buildings safe. That's the very first thing we have to think about. So it's a forever present in everything that we do and we really appreciate the uh, proclamation. And in order to help make that unfold uh, in real time, 
Every Tuesday this month, uh, we're having a little gathering at U on Tuesdays uh, in May, first four, four Tuesdays. Uh, we're meeting at Eudora to uh, raise a toast to safety and talk about the variety of subjects that were in the pro proclamation and uh, uh, build some partnerships through that process. Mm -hmm. Every, it's an uh, open at Eudora. invitation. At Eudora, 530 to 630. And it's an open invitation. So if you want to show up and give a toast, Please do. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Gary, if you want to come up here, sure. I'll hand you the proclamation from here. And Thanks, thank Dan. Thank you very much. Thank and maybe Mayor. we'll see you as you go. Okay. We now have a special honor of presenting a certificate of recognition to the Alter Girls basketball team, the 2022 Division II state champion. Um, Chris Hart, where's Chris? Oh, there she is, hiding up there, right there. And Kendall Peck are the uh, girls' basketball coaches, and the team will be accepting this certificate this evening. If you want to all come down here, I'm going to have Ms. Duval um, read this proclamation, and uh, we'll get you down here. And I'm going to come down there so I can have a picture taken with you all. Take that with me. Hold up just a second. Yeah. The city of Kettering is honored to recognize the Alter Girls varsity basketball team for their hard fought and successful 2021 2022 basketball season. Winning the 2022 Division II state championship exemplifies the dedication, hard work, and sportsmanship exhibited by these talented athletes. This achievement has brought distinction and honor to Alter High School and the Kettering community. It is with great pleasure that City Council and the Kettering community congratulates the Alter Girls Varsity Basketball Team on this exceptional accomplishment and extends our best wishes for continued success. If they'd had a championship girls basketball team, I would have been on it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to do that. Oh, <laughs> okay, um, we now have uh, the Martin Luther King Writing Contest winner. Um, quit laughing, Mr. Duke. I would have been on it. Tawana Jones, chairperson of the Board of Community Relations, will be making the presentation this evening. First one, right there. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Good evening, I should say. So, 
Tawana Jones, uh, Chair of Board of Community Relations. First of all, I just wanted to say how excited we are to have two new members appointed tonight uh, with Vicki and Heron. So we are always excited about some new energy and some new ideas on the board. So today I just wanted to talk about our SA uh, contest this year and recognize our high school winner who will be reading her essay tonight as well as the uh, runner-up for the high school and the middle school winner as well. And we have presents, which is always good. D just wanted to talk a little bit about the, the prompt that we had this year because uh, it's always, we always try to modify it from year to year so we can get some enthusiasm uh, from the kids and from the teachers who are prompting the kids to do the, uh, the contest. So this year in the prompt, we were asking students to write a persuasive speech, 500 words or less, with the purpose of motivating your fellow students or people in general to work together toward greater racial justice and understanding. What can be done to fight racism? Your speech can focus on your school, your community, or the world in, in general. Try to incorporate your own experience, that lived experience, if possible. How have you been affected by or involved in the issue you choose to address? So, uh, so therefore, just wanted to get right to it because Leah's gonna be far more uh, entertaining than, than I am. But our middle school winner was Chloe Collini. I don't think Chloe is here, but, but so we'll move on. And then our high school runners, runners up was Giovanna Ferguson and Joseph Wright. So again, we have presents and, uh, and some of our uh, BCR swag. And then Leah, is, Leah White is our high school winner. And I know her teacher here is here as well, uh, Jessica. So uh, Leah, if you would come on up. To the podium. Would you like for her to do the essay first and then we'll do? Okay, great. Congratulations. Hi, thank you for having me here tonight. Okay, the silencing of our voices. It's 2022, racism doesn't exist anymore, a phrase I've heard frequently from my peers and adults. It's 2022 and racism is more alive than ever. My people have been enslaved, segregated, discriminated against, and murdered, all because of the melanin in their skin. On May 17, 1954, the US Supreme Court delivered a verdict on Brown versus Board of Education, ruling that racial segregation in public schools was indeed against the 14th Amendment and would not be tolerated. Not even 15 months later, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old black child, was murdered on the account of his skin. Months after this tragic news, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white man in Montgomery. She was arrested for violating the laws that stated black passengers sit in the back of public buses and give up their seats for white riders if the front seats are full. While Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s leadership seemed to bring the civil rights movement to a peak, less than 10 years later, in 1963, the Birmingham church was bombed three days in a row. Four young African American girls were killed. All of the lives lost during these hateful crimes and hostility shown towards black people in America is brutal and truly disheartening. Children lost their lives due to hate. Families lost their daughters, sons, husbands, wives all because of the way that they were born. It is now 2022. You would think that the world as a whole would learn from our past and try to change for the better. If we don't change these patterns, our history is destined to repeat itself. It is 2022 and my people continue to be murdered for the melanin in their skin. My people have been screaming, praying, and begging that you all will understand we are equal. Dante Wright, 20 killed by a police officer while driving his girlfriend home in 2021. Andre Hill, 47, killed by a police officer while holding a phone in his hand as he was getting out of the garage in 2020. Manuel Ellis, 33, assaulted and beaten to death by a police officer while walking home from a convenience store in 2021. Breonna Taylor, 26, shot eight times and killed by a police officer in her own home in 2020. 
A Tatiana Jefferson, 28, a police officer shot and killed her through a window in her own home in front of her eight-year-old nephew in 2019. Botham Jean, 26, killed by a police officer while eating ice cream on his own sofa in 2018. Know their names, learn their stories. It's tremendously hard to live in a society where you feel that you have to be on guard 100% of your life. It's hard to walk out of the door or even fear sitting on your own couch, knowing that people want to hurt you just for the way you look. As a society, we should all get educated, learn the truth, and get rid of ignorance. Everyone deserves respect and to be treated as a human, no matter your skin color. It's 2022. Let's start living Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. We are all equal, and we should be treated as such. Thank you. Is someone doing a photo? Maybe, maybe her mom. Yeah. Maybe her mom would come and do a photo. You've got the, you've got the camera. Come on. Okay. Add her teacher too for a picture. Okay. Yeah. She made her picture in the top. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, I realized that um, I didn't ask if Vicki and, and Kieran were here. Kieran were here. Are they here? Because usually they frequently don't show up, so I didn't think to invite them. Did you stand up and? Great. There we go. Thank you. Thanks. Assume that's Vicki. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's see where we are. Okay. Public hearing. We do have a public hearing tonight um, on an application to rezone land at 2001 East Dorothy Lane from Economic Development Overlay District Number 14 to B Business. The Planning Commission recommended that the application be approved. The Planning Commission certification packet is made part of the record. First, city staff will make a presentation, then the applicant will have an opportunity to present. After those presentations, we will take comments for or against the application from those persons who are present tonight and wish to be heard. Comments will be limited to five minutes per person. Now I will open the public hearing. Any person that intends to speak to City Council tonight about this matter should stand, raise your right hand, and take the oath. Mr. Robillard, anybody up? We have Several, okay. Um, here's the oath. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you present tonight before city council is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Okay, please be seated. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robillard, you are going to give the staff's presentation tonight. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is Planning Commission case PC-22-005 uh, for 2001 East Dorothy Lane to rezone from EDO number 14, Economic Development Overlay, to B Business Zone. A particular property is located at the corner of Dunkel Park Drive and Dorothy Lane at the uh, northeast corner, what used to be the Krispy Kreme shop. The uh, new tenant in there wants to redevelop the, the, the site 
a little bit, but the economic development overlay requirements uh, require that it goes through a PUD process, but there's no longer a PUD process. And this is part of the ongoing uh, problems that we have with our old economic development overlay requirements. Uh, so in any case, um, they are required to go through this rezoning process. And they chose to, or they're asking to have it rezoned to be business. Uh, this just shows in the context of other properties in the area. Um, Duckle Park to the west, uh, shopping center uh, to the east and north and south. Uh, before I go too much further, the Planning Commission did hold a public hearing on this item on April 4th. They, after taking uh, public testimony and considering all the factors that they need to consider, they have recommended approval. Now that it's to City Council, there's seven items that the City Council uh, should consider for uh, prior to rezoning. The first is consistency, consistency with the adopted comprehensive plan. In this case, the comprehensive plan uh, calls for this area to be sub-regional commercial, which basically it's always been, it's uh, a shopping center district and it is still uh, consistent with that. Factor two would be adverse impact on neighboring lands. Since the uses really won't be changing at all, it's just redevelopment of the site uh, that is consistent with that factor. This diagram really just shows what the surrounding uses are again. Factor three is suitability as presently zoned. Right now, uh, it is the Planning Commission's thought is the staff's thought and the applicants thought that it is the current zoning is not the most suitable for this site but B business is. Fourth factor is health safety and welfare. Uh, we believe that this does meet the standards for health safety and welfare. Is in factor five is it in conformance with other public policy and plans for the neighborhood. It does allow for economic development to take place uh, on this site, so it meets that criteria. Factor six is the size of the tract. It is compliant with all the size uh, and other characteristics that meet our zoning code requirements for the B business district, and any other factor that the city council might want to consider. Uh, in conclusion, we just find that the, the Planning Commission does find that the requested rezoning does meet the standards and recommends that EDO, this parcel be rezoned from EDO 14 to B Business. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions for Mr. Robillard? Okay, see none at this point. Um, I will now call on the applicant. Uh, is the applicant present and wish to make a presentation? Are you both or? No, I'm thinking I'm on the way Okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you. You are the applicant. I am the applicant. Okay, could you uh, please my name state is, your name and address? Yeah. Jeff Lonchar, CESO, uh, 2800 Corporate Exchange Drive, Columbus, Ohio. Um, as I mentioned, I am the applicant and I guess the agent on behalf of the owner uh, for this case and this project, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I feel staff kind of adequately uh, covered all our areas of and factors, so happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none at this point, thank you very much. Um, and at this point, we'll take comments from the public. Um, I believe we have one person who would like to speak. Scratching all together. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, it's now, let's see, well, we skip that. We have no one, wish, no one wishes to speak at this point for or against this project, correct? Okay. City staff have anything additional you wanted to say? Okay, all right. I'm gonna close the public hearing. <clears throat> the hearing is now closed. 
City Council will consider legislation regarding this matter at a future meeting. Okay. We will now move on to a public hearing on or public comment on any legislation that is before us today. And um, anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the evening. Okay, is there anyone who wish to speak tonight? Okay, not seeing anyone, we will now move on to ordinances in second reading. We will start with you, Mr. Klepas. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance uh, this evening in, in second reading to amend the traffic control <coughs> map and the traffic control file of the city of Kettering to show the installation of traffic signs on Maddox Drive in the city of Kettering, Ohio. The traffic control map and the traffic control file of the city of Kettering, Ohio are hereby amended to show stop northbound and southbound Maddox Drive, right away Peach Orchard Road, and no parking anytime Maddox Drive east side from Peach Orchard Drive northward for a total distance of 475 feet. It's requested by the engineering department. I move for approval. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Mr. Bergstresser, you have some comments to make. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ordinance in second reading this evening uh, will amend the traffic control map and file to show uh, stop conditions for northbound and southbound Maddox Drive at the intersection with Peach Orchard Road. Uh, this ordinance is essentially a housekeeping matter. Uh, we determined uh, through review of files that uh, when this um, intersection was constructed a number of years ago that uh, f uh, permanent legislation was never enacted uh, to um, account for what is actually in the field. So nothing will change in the field as the way it's been there for a number of years. Uh, there will still be a two-way stop uh, for Maddox Drive in both directions at Peach Orchard. Peach Orchard will continue have, to have the, um, uh, the right-of-way at that intersection uh, without, being, without any stops. Uh, it will also enact uh, no parking along the east side of Maddox Drive, uh, essentially along um, what will be in the future uh, Gentilly Park. And this is on the opposite side of the road from where uh, the Acorn Walk uh, housing, uh, um, uh, senior housing is located. I'd be happy to answer any questions. We have any questions? Okay. Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Now I'll move on to resolutions. Um, Mrs. Hall, I believe you're going first. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the purchase of tables, chairs, and storage carts for the Charles I. Latham Senior Center. The estimated cost for this is $48,000. The amount budgeted is $48,000, and this is being requested by Parks, Recreation, and the Cultural Arts Department. Move for. I move for approval. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I believe Mr. Sweeterman is going to comment. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will allow us to purchase uh, chairs and carts that move the chairs for our uh, Charles I. Lathrum Senior Center. The estimated cost is $48,000. Uh, these funds um, or these expenditures will come from the funds that were provided by the generous donation from the Lathrum family. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use sealed bidding, competitive bargaining, and negotiated quotes and or an approved cooperative purchasing program to purchase furniture, fixtures, and equipment for phase two of the Rosewood Arts Center renovation project. Um, estimated cost is $388,000, amount budgeted is zero, and is requested by Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department. Move for approval. Second. 
Okay, Mr. Sweetman. Thank you, Your Honor. This obviously relates to our Rosewood construction project, which is a three-phase project that began in 2021 and will go through 2023. We are currently uh, in the, the beginning stage of phase two as we award contracts from a recently opened bid for phase two. Uh, this particular item relates to the furniture, fixtures, and equipment for phase two, estimated to be $388,000. The furniture, fixtures, and equipment will be appropriated later on tonight's agenda. Um, this is the uh, results of the fundraising uh, in conjunction with the Kettering Parks Foundation. So while we're appropriating $388,000 for furniture and fixture for phase two, we will also have funding contributed by the Parks Foundation through their fundraising efforts for the same amount. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, see none, call the roll. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Duke. Yes. Mr. Kleepass. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution amending resolution number 10694-22 regarding the renovation of Rosewood Art Center Phase 2. The estimated cost is $1,762,902. The amount budgeted was $1,365,000. I move for approval. Oh, this is being requested by the Public Service Department. I apologize. <laughs> Second. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Well, we haven't asked. We haven't heard from Mr. Schwederman. Thank Let's you. Do that first. Uh, another item related <laughs> to the uh, Rosewood construction project. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, received authorization from council for an estimated cost of $1,365,000. We are asking you to amend that resolution this evening for a cost of $1,762,000 for a number of reasons. Um, the first is the rising cost in bids that we are receiving that we have talked with city council uh, in regards to about other projects. Also, we have a, a one item in specific where a donation was made uh, for the new dance floor. So we've included the new dance floor that adds cost to the resolution authority. Um, and we also have um, a contingency item of about $45,000, as well as moving items from phase three into phase two. And I'll discuss that in more detail as well with the supplemental appropriation that's on your agenda later this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hearing none, call the roll. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022. Uh, estimated cost is $908,900 net transfers. Uh, requested by the Finance Department, I move for approval. Second. Mr. Sweetman. Thank you, Your Honor. The first item for the Capital Improvement Program, or for the supplemental, is for our Capital Improvement Program related to the furniture, fixtures, and equipment that you approved earlier for Rosewood. So we'll be appropriating that $388,000. Again, that uh, actual funding will come from the Kettering Parks Foundation. The second item of the supplemental appropriation, also related to Rosewood, uh, is to uh, is a supplemental appropriation of five hundred and twenty thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, this includes several elements. The first is one hundred and fifty two thousand three hundred and sixty dollars requested for the phase one project. Um, we will be carrying over ninety thousand one hundred and thirty three dollars of unused funds. Uh, that were not appropriated at the end of the calendar year 2021. So we'll be reappropriating that money to use it in 2022 due to the timing of the project. We will also have a new funding of $62,227 related to change orders that were related to the phase one project. For phase two, we'll have an additional appropriation of $368,540. That will include a care, a, excuse me, <clears throat> a new funding amount of $68,540 based upon the bids we recently opened. 
It will also include $300,000 of funding that was moved into the phase two construction project that had originally been planned for and budgeted in the phase three construction project, which will take place in 2023. So the 2023 budget will be $300,000 less because of this transaction. I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> no, it's a little confusing. But anyone have any questions? Okay. All right, let's call the roll. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. We now move to ordinances in first reading. And I think we ended up with it's mine. Mr. Klepes. Thank you, Your Honor. I have an ordinance uh, in first reading this evening to rezone 2125 East Dorothy Lane from Economic Development Overlay District Number 14 to B Business District Planning Commission Case Number PC 22 002, uh, requested by Planning and Development Department. This first reading. Okay. First reading, that's the last. Wait a minute, do we have one more? One more. Call on manager. Mark. I have a comment. Th thank you, Your Honor. It yeah. is an ordinance in first reading, so no vote this evening, but I will give you just a brief explanation. Uh, you held a public hearing on this matter at a previous council meeting. Uh, it is not the public hearing that you heard earlier tonight, although it's very similar. This involves, again, EDO 14 and uh, rezoning to B business for the property at 2125 East Dorothy Lane, which is essentially the corner of Dorothy Lane and Woodman, the old Throckmorton site. We'll be rezoning that property. There'll be a second reading at a future council meeting and your vote, and the new uh, zoning will be um, consistent with the wishes of the potential reuse of that property. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Klepas, did you have a comment you wanted to make? No. Oh, I thought you said a minute ago you did. All right. Okay. No other questions? Okay. This is in first reading, so we not take a vote. Um, we have one more. Mayor Lehner, I have another ordinance in its first reading uh, to rezone 954 Boulevard from O Office District to BP Business Park District Planning Commission case number PC22-003. This is being requested by the Planning and Development Department. Mr. Schwedeman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this ord ordinance in first reading uh, follows a public hearing that you had at a previous council meeting for the rezoning of 954 Boulevard from the O office designation to the BP business park designation. 954 Boulevard is probably uh, more well known as the synchrony buildings at the Kettering business park. Uh, essentially two buildings and the acreage that goes with it for a total of about 400,000 square feet of building space. Uh, the applicant has requested the uh, change in the zoning uh, to be consistent with potential reuses. Uh, the business park zoning is consistent uh, with the land just to the north at the business park uh, for the Kettering Business Park. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay. Seeing none, thank you very much. That will cl conclude our ordinances in first reading um, Ms. Kaczynski, do we have any certifications and petitions tonight? Your Honor, we do not have any certifications or petitions this evening. Okay, thank you. We will now move to the manager's report for the community update. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a few items for the community update this evening. Uh, the first is just a reminder that phrase tickets are currently on sale and you can buy tickets at the phrase fanfare location at town and country shopping center or at phrase.com or etix.com uh, and we've listed a few shows uh, up there for your perusal and if you'd like to understand what my musical tastes are i'll see you at the concert on july 15th mm -hmm. and justin moore Safety Village registration is still underway and uh, you can sign up for Safety Village with the engineering department at 296-2436. This is a program that takes place in August, uh, takes place this summer for kids entering kindergarten in August of 2022. The police department will be hosting along uh, a 
will be hosting a drug take back program on Saturday, April 30th here at the Government Center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So this is a special event. It's a national event uh, to take your unwanted prescription pills and you can turn them in. But I do want to mention uh, that we have a regular drop, saw, drop off site daily that is located in the entrance to our police station. So if you have pills and you can't make this particular day, you can simply bring them to the entrance to our police, debate, our police department uh, anytime you would like. The Kettering Community Block Party is back, uh, and it will be June 8th this year from 6 to 8 at Lincoln Park Civic Commons. Always a very popular event for our residents and for our staff and council, so we're looking forward to having that again June 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. Your Honor, that's all I have for you for this evening's community update. If you have to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions of Mr. Schwedeman? Okay, well then we will move on to other business, not on the written agenda. And uh, if anyone would like to speak for, before council tonight, not related to the legislation that we were dealing with tonight, uh, now is your time to do that. Um, each speaker will have a five minute limit. Speakers are asked to state their name and address. Is there anyone who wishes to speak before council this evening? We have one person at least. Okay, please proceed. Good evening, my name's Larry Ford. I live at 3508 Valleywood Drive and I'm coming to you before you today uh, due to safety issues. Um, I have contacted the Kettering Police Department multiple times and they do respond, but unfortunately the speeding on our street is getting worse. We are through street that connects Wilmington Pike to Dorothy Lane. There are other similar streets um, Ackerman and of course Lincoln Park Boulevard where speeding is just pretty bad. Uh, you go the speed limit, you get ran up on by cars a lot. Our kids play in these areas. Um, I have recommended speed bumps, which I have been told by the city engineers it is not feasible. However, um, the excuse being with snow plows, snow plows run maybe two weeks out of 52 weeks a year. That that just doesn't logically sit. If speed bumps are not in it, are not possible, we need to find a solution to curb the speeding. Unfortunately on Valleywood, for the police officers that do come out and sit on Valleywood, there's not many areas where they can sit to monitor the speed. Everybody knows where they sit, and so of course, they're gonna slow down, especially if uh, they have a hint that cops are there. We also have uh, they have near my house placed a little speed monitor sign that does nothing to curb the speeding. So I am here before you to ask you to look into the situation to please, I have offered speed bumps. I don't know what else we could do, but we really need to curb this because the fact of the matter is if we don't use speed bumps or use anything to curb it, what's the real cost? The life of a child. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a call on the uh, police chief. Maybe he has something to say. If not, at this point, that's all right. If it's okay, Your Honor, I'll get with him after the meeting and speak with him. Okay, that's all okay. right. Meet with him after. Anyone else wish to speak? Huh? Come on down. Forgive me. I don't like to speak publicly very often. Uh, my name's Terry Brennan. My family's lived at 3118 Atherton Road for over 80 years. We've lived in Van Buren Township for an additional 10 years beyond that. I've recently read an ordinance that I do not agree with. And I wanna ask everyone up here one question. Does the desire of a resident to not view a commercial type vehicle outweigh another resident's right to earn a living? I'd like every one of you to answer, please. We're here to hear. Okay. Ordinance 1145.13.2 basically states if you were a blue collar worker and you're required to take your vehicle home and have all the commercial signage on it, you are required to put it behind your house or on the side of your house behind a fence. 
Many houses in Kettering, you can't do that to. Many houses in Kettering, you don't even have a drive going on the side. So you're basically telling these people they have a choice. They can live in Kettering or they can work or move out of Kettering and work. They don't have another choice. And to me, I want our city to feel welcoming to not only white collar, but blue collar workers. And as a matter of fact, the ordinance is written so poorly that you guys can use it to abuse. You can make any car in the city of Kettering required to be behind a sign, behind a fence, on the side of the house, or behind. Because you only have to meet two criteria, and two criteria are designed by, let's see the exact wording on it, uh, as determined by the zoning administrator. There's two criteria, you only have to meet two, and he can decide that a car is required to be behind a fence or anything else because every car does can carry, can carry merchandise, and you could have items in it that would show that. To me, this one needs to be abolished, along with dot one as well, because trailers are used by businesses. These two ordinances are actually stopping a business from opening, and I'm not here for myself. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a blue collar worker. I have many people that are friends that are. I want them to feel welcome in our city. That's it. Thank you um, for coming in, and we will continue to dialogue with you on this issue um, and appreciate the effort that you're putting into it. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no one further who wishes to speak, we'll now hear from council members. Um, Mr. Klepas, would you like to start? Sure, thank you. Uh, l last night, the uh, Sister Cities had their uh, monthly meeting. I'm the council liaison on that group. Uh, most of uh, the activities in that meeting were centered around planning for our next uh, Spa Snock event, which is on uh, June the 15th. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, got a lot of good news last night on that date. Uh, I looked at the long-range weather <laughs> forecast. And there's a 41% chance of rain. That is good news because for the last three or four years, it was 100% rain on that mm -hmm. night. So I hope everybody Two comes out. out. This is a big, <laughs> this is a big, uh, this is a big fundraiser for for sister cities, and uh, we hope everybody's able to attend. Uh, we all have been at a lot of different activities, so I'm going to talk about a couple that uh, that I went to in the last two weeks. Uh, just from maybe a little little different point of view, but uh, uh, one was uh, the, there was a ribbon cutting on the 15th of April at the Lasky Law Office. And the reason why I bring that up is they moved from the city of Dayton. Uh, they moved their law office uh, into Kettering over on Office Park Drive, and they moved into a building that had been uh, virtually uh, empty for the last two or three years. Done a beautiful job of. Uh, Probably Terry, you guys worked with them on that. Uh, re rebuilding and remodeling uh, that facility. And now we've got a great new law office uh, there at, uh, at the Office Park Drive. Um, Tree Fest was on the 16th, and, and once again this year, a lot of volunteers came out to, uh, in, the, in this case, Southdale Nature Park, our uh, Parks and Recreation Department, were there with a lot of uh, volunteers and uh, did some replanning in that area, and I know the mayor uh, did a lot of digging. I saw her digging over there. <laughs> um, also, uh, an interesting one was on the 19th of April, we had a ribbon cutting uh, on Stroop Road, right across from the green, for the Beaver Creek Florist. In the Beaver Creek Florist, we're moving to Kettering from Beaver Creek. And I asked the owner, I said, will you be naming this Beaver Creek Florist in Kettering? But they had to relocate, and they chose to relocate in Kettering. Glad to have another uh, nice florist shop. And, and lastly, I want to mention a, a fundraiser that uh, several of us went to on the 20th. And uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, my colleague here, uh, Mrs. Jill Hall, because uh, she, uh, along with members of the local Ukrainian committee, uh, hosted a giant fundraiser uh, over at uh, Poland Farm last Wednesday. They, uh, they raised money uh, for, uh, for providing uh, food, uh, emergency food for uh, Ukraine. And uh, I don't know how, how they all did it. Uh, 
It just happened uh, kind of quickly, at least in my mind, it happened kind of quickly, and we just had a great turnout. The, the big deal for me was the fact that the money that was raised and the donations went to the World Central Kitchen, and the World Central Kitchen is run by Chef uh, Jose Andres, and if you follow much of what's going on around the world in Feeding Hungry, you see him mentioned time and time again. So I thought uh, that's kind of neat that uh, Kettering, Ohio, was able to touch something that happens worldwide, but specifically in the Ukraine. So I want to congratulate Jill and the folks that worked on that. The guys, it was an amazing event. And last but not least, when you have a choice of what to do with your disposable income, use it at a Kettering business. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kleepatz. This is all. Thank you very much. Mr. Klepatz for uh, mentioning the fundraiser. It really went well, and I want to thank um, the city of Kettering for donating the space. And um, we, the goal was to raise about ten thousand dollars. We raised fifteen thousand. Fifteen. Raised fifteen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> World Central Kitchen has already received ten. Uh, Kettering Hospital has three on the way to World Central Kitchen, and then we also had a silent auction and some Ukrainian crafts, and art was sold, um, and so the rest of the money went to that, which is going to medical supplies, including some lovely eggs that Terry donated that um, are actually real eggs that are really intricately designed. and. Uh, Many crafts like that were sold and, and really grateful for that and for everybody who really helped make it success. Almost everybody from council was there and uh, I expected 75 people and we had double that. And it was a lovely evening and just really glad that thousands and thousands and thousands of meals are going to be served now in Ukraine where people are walking for days and days without food. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, last week, uh, as one of the council uh, representatives of Miami Valley Communications Council, uh, we had our most recent meeting, uh, had a nice briefing from uh, the task force on crime, and also I wanted to announce that MVCC is having an open house from 6 to 8 p.m. on Wednesday, May 4th. For those of you who haven't uh, been to that facility before, it's extremely impressive, and uh, they do a lot of good things there, uh, including uh, any citizen who wants to can participate in it with just a small entry fee. And I think more citizens should avail themselves of that. Thank you. I'll produce a movie, you can go out and join. <laughs> um, I wanna echo what uh, Mr. Scott said, the open house at MVCC on May 4th, um, the TCSU, what did they call that? The task force vehicle will be there. Um, it's pretty cool. And you can tour it, look at it and everything. Anyway, it's a great facility. Everyone should come to the open house, as Mr. <coughs> Scott said. Um, I would like to officially welcome uh, Hiram Patel and Vicki Colon to the Board of Community Relations. We are thrilled to have you. Um, and congratulations again to our Martin Luther King uh, essay winners. This is my second time hearing Leah White speak, and she's just impressive all the way around. So I'm so proud of all of them. Um, and I just want to give um, an update on the stay put program from um, the, an update I was given by Angela Raman. Um, the, there have been 614 applications processed. Uh, the average amount of rental assistance given is $4,201. Um, the average age of the applicant is 38. Uh, most of these applicants are women, and 49% of them are African American. And the number one reason that people are applying for assistance and the reason they give for not being able to sustain employment is um, their inability to get childcare. It's such a huge issue and we need more affordable, stable, better childcare everywhere. So, but I'm very proud of that program and how well it's doing. And I believe that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Duke. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of things. Um, the Ukrainian event that Mrs. Hall put together was just a, 
as, as we've shared a, a wonderful evening, what, what I particularly enjoyed was the presentation that uh, folks from our Ukrainian community put together, uh, the slideshow, the music, uh, the dancing. Um, it, 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 was, it, it was a real education. And, and for me, uh, I've not had the, the privilege of being in Ukraine, but I, I kind of felt like uh, I, I learned quite a bit about about the country more, more than I knew before. So thank you. It was an education and and it was a, a great fundraiser. Just a, uh, one other thing. There are a couple of students here from the Leadership Academy. Uh, Dr. Uh, Pamela Ellis, who was just over here, had to leave a minute ago. She just left. And Dr. Vicki Colon, uh, members of our Leadership Academy. And uh, you picked a short meeting too. Oh, and I'm sorry, and Nate, I apologize, Nate Wynn, uh, you picked a short meeting to come to. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much, all of you. Um, I think everyone's pretty much covered um, the ribbon cuttings, et cetera, that we had this week. It's, things are starting to pick up and reopening, and it's neat to see. Um, I just want to add a word of deep appreciation to Jill for absolutely an outstanding evening. I mean, that you could work on something for a year and not produce something that touched that one. So it was, it was truly awesome. So thank you for all your work on that. Um, with that, I think we have no further business to do tonight, and the meeting is adjourned. Uh, the next meeting, if I get it in here before Bruce, um, <laughs> is um, March, um, May 10th. <laughs> it's, it's real small there.